My New Year's resolution for 2018 was to work on more creative projects and I guess make more YouTube videos since I usually kind of enjoy doing that, but I uploaded like two videos so that didn't really work out. But it's 2019, so hey, I'll be more productive this year, right? My buddy Iggy made this list of all the games he played in 2018 and I thought, hey, that's a pretty good idea. I'm gonna steal it and turn it into a video. So you know, here we are. Welcome to games I played in 2018, but not necessarily all of them because I only really included games I started playing this year, because otherwise the list would have been much too long because there are certain games I come back to regularly but they don't really fit into this video. Or just games I played in 2018. Yeah, that's better. Before I get started, I just want to point out that these games aren't ranked in any particular order. I just went through my recent games on Steam and just noted them down one by one. I'll talk a bit about the game itself, what I liked or disliked about it, and whether I finished it or not. Also, I apologize if some of the gameplay footage looks a bit fuzzy. I seriously couldn't be bothered to hop back into some of these games and kinda just rip my gameplay footage straight from my Twitch VODs if available. Anyways, let's get started. We'll start out strong with one of the pretty darn good ones. The Red Strings Club is a cyberpunk adventure game. It focuses on some very political topics, but I quite like that. I finished this one and actually enjoyed the playthrough enough to do a should you play on it. So if you want more details, you should probably check that video out because I feel like there's not much for me to say here that I didn't already say in that video. Next up is Ghost of a Tale, a very cute indie RPG in which you play a mouse on the quest to get reunited with your one true love. This game looks absolutely stunning. You can tell that a lot of love went into this and the stealth gameplay can actually get quite challenging. Nevertheless, after playing it for a couple of hours, I just lost interest. Moving around started feeling tedious and slow despite feeling great at first. Yes, there's a lot of quests and things to collect, but it didn't feel satisfying to me. Everything felt like a chore and I ended up having to force myself to continue playing, so I simply dropped it, which is a bummer because I initially really looked forward to the game's release. This obviously doesn't mean that Ghost of a Tale is a bad game. It's very well crafted, but I guess it's just not for me. Epi Story Typing Chronicles is an interesting take on, you guessed it, typing games. It is set in an origami world and the story literally unfolds as you progress. It's pretty neat, got cute visuals, feels satisfying to play and can get pretty damn hard at times. Didn't finish it and actually only played it for like 2-3 to three hours, but certainly enjoyed it. I could feel myself getting back into it while recording the footage for this video, so I might have to hop back into this one sometime. A game that totally slipped under my radar was Full Throttle Remastered. The original came out back in 1995 and I remember playing through this game multiple times on my dad's old PC. I had to get the remaster as soon as I found out that it exists and played through it in one sitting. It took me about 4 hours, though I honestly remembered most of the game still. Especially because I played the original like a dozen times at least. If you don't know it, this is one of the great classic LucasArts adventure games. You play as Ben Throttle, a scary but good-hearted biker who gets caught up in, and I'm quoting the Steam store page here, a tale of motorcycles, mayhem and murder. Well said, Steam. Anyways, it's good. New artwork, 4K support, remastered audio and music, and the ability to switch back and forth between the classic and remastered modes at the press of a button. I'm definitely looking at this one through nostalgia goggles, but I loved it. Whether you've played the original before or not, I highly recommend this remaster. Plague Inc. Evolved. You might know this one as a relatively simple phone app, but back in 2016 we got this game ported to PC. It's good fun. Trying to wipe out humanity with your custom crafted disease is very cool and the game is actually pretty damn hard as well. I just checked the Steam page and apparently there's a co-op mode as well now. I guess that's a thing. But yeah, I'll definitely be hopping back into this one again at some point and just play a couple casual rounds. Because sometimes eradicating humanity is exactly what you need to do after a hard day of work. I did a should you play on Unworthy and why I think it's good, but basically it's, and it physically hurts me to say this, 2D Dark Souls. I'm not going to say much else about it besides that it's pretty good and that I finished it. You can check out my video on it if you want some more details. Ready for a lightning round? Let's go. You know this one, paved the way for the Assassin's Creed series, controls are clunky and the game is buggy as fuck. Finished it, but it was bad. Definitely better than its predecessor, gameplay felt a lot better and fewer bugs. Finished it, was pretty decent, still not amazing though. It's a Souls game, so you know what you're getting. 
drop it relatively soon after Ornstein and Smo, and I think I'll never finish a Souls game. Probably the best free-to-play game that's out there. A shit ton of content, regular updates, and a great community. A big new update came out recently as well. I might have to get back into it sometime. A buggy mess and you need the community patch to make it playable. Performance is absolute ass in some places. Still had fun though and should finish it sometime. There was a lot of hype around this one, but I couldn't get into it. It's basically Undertale too. It's free and good. Play it if you liked Undertale. If you didn't like Undertale, what the hell is wrong with you? Road Trip, the story of four bros. Really like this one. Lovable characters, great banter, and actual fun gameplay. Pretty far into the game, but moved on to something different. Gotta finish that sometime. That's it for the lightning round. Let's take a breather, lay off the coke, and return to our regular program. Lynn. This is an interesting one. This and the next two games were supposed to be in a should you play Halloween triple feature, but that obviously didn't happen. Maybe because I started working on it a week before Halloween and spent five of those seven days intoxicated watching the same three seasons of Adventure Time over and over again. Anyways, Lynn is a free horror visual novel. It tells the story of a 15 year old girl and let's be real here, nothing is scarier than that. In all honesty though, the game is interesting. It's not exactly scary, but there's this eerie feeling slowly creeping up on you as you watch your stress meter slowly rise, not knowing what's going to happen. It might not be a traditional horror game, but I think the visual novel perfectly captures how it feels to be like Lynn, comparing yourself to others and just not feeling good enough. No matter how hard you try to be better, how hard you try to improve, you just can't help but look at your friends or colleagues and they're all just better versions of yourself, without even trying. The audio felt a bit mediocre to me, but besides that, I think Lynn is an interesting experience. It doesn't even take two hours to finish, so maybe check it out if it seems like your kind of thing. It's free, so what do you got to lose, right? This next one was probably the worst game I played this year. Confess My Love is another free horror game that was supposed to be in my Halloween video. Or at least the Steam store tags it as horror. The game is boring as shit. You basically just pick up stuff, talk to a character, and that's a whole playthrough. It takes like five minutes max. There's 20 different endings and some of them need you to do stuff in a very specific manner that's almost impossible to figure out yourself, so you need to check the guide. 17 of the endings play out almost exactly the same, and only two of the endings might be considered scary. I don't know why this game is rated very positive on Steam. You guys got shit taste. For real, even the dev made sure to let us know that the game is really fucking boring. Don't play this, it's a waste of time. Finishing it took me around two hours and it was not worth it. Perception of the Dead is the last free horror game I played for the Halloween video. The game consists of three spooky-ish but nevertheless quite cute visual novels. They range from moderately spooky to somewhat spooky and the art, audio, voice acting and writing of the game is all pretty decent. I think it was a nice change of pace and I quite enjoyed the two hours it took me to finish this. Probably the best out of the three free horror games I tried. Would recommend. Yo, Lethal League Blaze! This game is fucking awesome! If you've played the first Lethal League, you should already know this one. A high-speed baseball fighting game. It's amazing. A great game to play with your friends on the couch, since it's relatively easy to get into, but also a great game to play online if you're like me and don't have any friends to play local co-op with. Since the skill ceiling is so extremely high, unless you're in the top 10, there'll always be someone who can kick your ass. One of my highlights this year. Looks amazing, sounds amazing with a banger soundtrack, it's just really fucking awesome. Highly recommend it if it seems like something that's up your alley. Yakuza Zero. We finally got a Yakuza game on PC and I obviously had to get it. The main story is very intriguing and mysterious and the side stories are absolutely hilarious and actually managed to make me laugh. That's quite rare. I still think that the combat feels a bit janky, but I really don't give a shit. The game's amazing and I love it. I'm 8 hours into it, barely into the second chapter and I will definitely be playing more of it in the near future. To finish this list off, Monster Hunter World, the game that's been stealing all of my free time lately. 120 hours into it, finished the main storyline and still absolutely in love with it. The game runs very well for me except for some minor but nonetheless annoying exceptions like frame drops on certain monsters and occasional sound bugs. There's just a shit ton of content. I love trying new weapons or weapon types and coming up with entirely new builds for them. I don't think I'll stop playing this one anytime soon, especially with all the events and free content Capcom is throwing our way. It's good. Very good. Well, that's it. That's all the games I played this year. 2018 was quite the good year for me. I played some good games, a few bad games, I started streaming more regularly, reached affiliate on Twitch, taught myself the basics of pixel art, made my own subscriber badges and emotes, and overall just had a good time. I know this might be off-brand for me, but the last six months were very good to me, and as cheesy as it might sound, for the first time I can actually be happy with where I am in life right now. 
course, that doesn't mean that it'll stay that way and everything is bound to go to shit eventually, but hey. For now, I'm doing sort of okay, so that's neato. Let's hope 2019 is going to be a great year as well with hopefully a lot of good games. Y2K, Coffee Talk, She Dreams Elsewhere, Yuppie Psycho, Toe Gem and Earl Back in the Groove, Sable, Black Future 88, My Friend Pedro, and The Last Night are just some of the games I'm looking forward to. Before I go, I just want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you had a great start into the new year, and I'll see you all soon. I'll be back, filled with existential dread and self-doubt just like always. Thank you so much for sticking around. Happy 2019. Bye. Check it out.